It's Tim Schieser here for TechSpot, and this is the Nokia Lumia 1520, the company's brand new flagship six inch Windows phone, which is designed to take the market by storm and take on the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, Xperia Z Ultra, and other large screen devices that have been quite popular amongst some users. On the front, we have a six inch 1920 by 1080 IPS LCD display. Internally, we have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 SoC with a 2.26 GHz quad-core Crate 400 CPU, Adreno 330 GPU, and 2 GB of RAM. There's also 32 gigs of internal storage with a micro SD card slot, and on the back, there's a 20 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization, branded as PureView by Nokia once again. Inside, we also have a 3400 milliamp hour battery with wireless charging, and the phone comes running out of the box with Windows Phone 8 GDR3. Before we head into the review, just want to say big thanks to Expansies Australia for sending out the Nokia Lumia 1520 for me to review today. You can check them out at expansies.com.au and their other range of international sites if you are in other locations. They offer a great range of smartphones at pretty decent prices. Of course, they're all unlocked and off contract. So again, check them out, expansies.com.au. The design of the 1520 reminds me quite a lot of Lumia's 720, which is a lower end device that doesn't pack such a massive display. What we actually see here is an entirely polycarbonate unibody that wraps around the display, which is of course protected by a very smooth Gorilla Glass, which is quite nice to use. I sometimes attack smartphone companies for using plastic in their designs, but Nokia's use of this sort of soft touch polycarbonate is really quite good. It feels nice, it keeps the device relatively light, even though it does overall weigh 209 grams. And of course, that infusion of color looks absolutely wonderful. With me here, I have the yellow model. You can also get this in red, black, and white, and I seem to find the color looks absolutely fantastic. It's striking and it's sure to turn heads when you pull it out of your pocket on the street. As you'll notice, the handset is quite large to fit in that six inch display. And we do have some other smartphones here that we can compare it to. This is Nokia's Lumia 1020, the one with the massive camera on the back. And you can see just here the massive difference in size between a 4.5 inch display and the six inch display on the Lumia 1520. We also have here the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, which I recently reviewed. This has a 5.7 inch display. And even then, the Lumia 1520 is just that little bit larger, again, to accommodate the display. And the display covers about 71% of the entire front panel, which is quite good to see. Despite its size, the Lumia 1520 remains pretty ergonomic. It's actually quite curved around the sides here, which makes it quite easy to hold in your hands. And these corners can be a little bit annoying, but it's generally speaking not too bad and not nearly as cumbersome as the Xperia Z Ultra, which I used before. Button placing is again interesting from Nokia going with the volume rocker above the power button and camera button, but this does actually make it very ergonomic and quite easy to power the device on and off. Because you can see here holding the device normally and the button for power fits reasonably comfortably into that perfect position for your thumb and quite easily again if you're left-handed to hit that button there. The two-stage camera button also makes it quite easy to take photos. You can simply hold it down when the phone is locked and it will simply open up the camera allowing you to focus by pressing it in the first stage and of course clicking it takes a photo pretty instantly and that 20 megapixel camera is quite good as we'll show you in a brief moment. Also around the device, you'll find the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top, the micro USB 2.0 port on the bottom, and on the left hand side here, you'll find both the micro SD card slot and the nano SIM slot. If you're not using an iPhone, you might need to get your SIM changed so that you can use the nano SIM inside the Lumia 1520, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. On the back panel, the bottom also sees the device's speaker, as well as Nokia and PureView branding, plus that optically stabilized camera, LED flash, and a couple of microphone grills. As you'll notice, we have the buttons on the bottom of the display. These are the capacitive buttons that control Windows Phone, of course, being back, home, and search. When you're holding the device one hand, it can be reasonably tricky 
to hit that back button. It's a little bit of a stretch, but in the traditional two-handed method, of course, you can simply press any of these buttons to get Windows Phone working. The device also comes in around 9mm thick, which doesn't make the device too thick and keeps it quite portable despite its size. Overall, I'm actually quite happy with the design of the Lumia 1520. The, again, that color looks great. It feels great thanks to that polycarbonate. And even though it's quite large, it's still ergonomic and reasonably easy to use, although not as easy as if you got a smaller device. The display of the 1520 is one of the outstanding features of this device. Not only is it large and beautiful, but the 1080p resolution makes it extremely crisp for everyday usage. As you can see here on the home screens, each of the squares looks absolutely fantastic, very crisp, and even a decent amount more crisp than the 720p AMOLED panels that they used on the 925 and 1020. Reading text is of course absolutely fantastic when you have a 1080p display. You can use thin fonts and it still is extremely readable. We'll just dive here straight into Internet Explorer and get up TechSpot. And as you notice, even the smallest text here is still readable to my eye, even from where I'm sitting away from the device itself. And of course, if you zoom in, everything looks extremely crisp and fantastic. Even the images, everything is just so crisp on this display. When looking at images again, you get that fantastic crispness. It's not quite as crisp as a 4.7 inch 1080p display. This sits below 400 pixels per inch at around about 370. But nevertheless, you'll still find the quality when looking at some Ultra HD pictures that I have here is simply astonishing. Also, what I noticed is that the color quality from this panel is very accurate and looks great. It's not oversaturated as you'll see here from some of these images, but it delivers lifelike pictures and that's exactly what you want to see from this IPS LCD display. Everything looks fantastic. It's got some slight color banding issues and the contrast isn't as good as you'll get from an AMOLED panel, but nevertheless, as far as LCD panels go, this is one of the best that I've seen. It also benefits from Nokia's clear black polarizing technology that keeps the display extremely readable in outdoor light. In fact, this is one of the most readable panels that I've ever seen outdoors. You can see here that we can turn on and off sunlight readability and it is just astonishingly easy to see this display in the sunlight. You can also adjust the Lumia's color profile depending on what you feel like. I tend to leave it on both the default settings because this gives lifelike images that are still vibrant and great to look at. Giving a close up of the tiles here shows you just how crisp this display looks. It looks absolutely fantastic and you won't be disappointed with this in any way. Of course, the size may be a bit of a concern coming in at six inches, but if you can get past the size, you'll find a fantastic display inside this device. Next up, we'll be looking at the performance of the Nokia Lumia 1520 as it's booting up here. This is the first Windows Phone device to come with a quad-core processor. The Snapdragon 800 is in here and we've seen it on a number of other flagship Android devices, the LG G2, Nexus 5 and some other devices all come with this extremely powerful SoC and it really makes Windows Phone a breeze to use. That said, of course, Windows Phone is always fast on no matter what phone you get it on. And I don't believe this is as optimized for the Snapdragon 800 as it is per clock speed wise and things for some of the lower end devices. But nevertheless, it is extremely fast to run everything. For example, we just booted up the device here and we're gonna go and launch some apps. For example, clicking on Office, instant. Everything is loaded immediately at the touch of a button. Of course, we do have those animations there which makes it appear a little bit more slow. But for example, games, it just loads. It is extremely smooth, the transitions in between these applications. Again, Twitter, this is a third party application. As you can see, it loads a little bit slower, probably because it's not as optimized for that Snapdragon 800. But overall, everything about this device just loads extremely quickly. Going into photos, it loads so quick tapping on everything, zooming, panning, everything is extremely quick. We head into Internet Explorer up the top here. Again, as you saw before when we were loading TechSpot, panning and everything, moving around, manipulating web pages is extremely fast. We get a little bit of checkerboarding there, but that's not too much of a big deal because it simply is flowing that text fantastically around the display. We're also running for you on the screen the T1 
T-Rex HD test. Unfortunately, I couldn't get results from this particular benchmark due to issues in the app, but you can see some of the graphical quality of the Adreno 330 GPU in here running on Windows Phone. and actually does a very, very good job. This could be one of the smoothest runs of this that I've seen, which could be due to some backend things in the Lumia 1520 and Windows Phone, but nevertheless, it will run everything in the Windows Store perfectly because of course, this device is one of the fastest that you can get and apps don't really take use of the 1520's powerful GPU just yet. Of course, there are some favorites you can find here in the store, including Temple Run 2 and others, so definitely check out the Windows Phone store and the power of that Adreno 330. Of course, multitasking here is also very, very quick, thanks to that two gigabytes of RAM, everything that you've used in the past, you can simply flick to with very little effort, and of course, it loads those up pretty quickly. And one of the new features of Windows Phone 8 GDR3 is that you can close applications in that multitasking window. On the back of the device here, you can see Nokia's 20 megapixel optically stabilized sensor. And this is an absolutely fantastic camera. I can't stress this enough. Diving straight into Pro Camera and you will find some fantastic settings to use with that 20 megapixel sensor. And it delivers some fantastic results, which we'll show you right now. In perfect lighting, you can see that it's a very balanced camera, giving lifelike results, but still with fantastic color quality. And of course, with images sized at 20 megapixels, you can zoom in without losing too much quality. And in low light, we have, of course, optical image stabilization, which means you can use quite long shutter speeds and still keep out the shakes for some really, really good low light results, as we've seen with past Nokia cameras. Here is Nokia's ProCam application, which gives us fantastic control over the camera that they've included on the 1520. You'll see here up the top that we have a range of settings that we can use for controlling our images. For example, here, we can automatically choose the focus level, which is, can come in quite handy if you can't get the focus right simply by tapping on the display. We can change things such as ISO with ease, and it automatically approximates the shutter speed necessary to get us a good exposure. But of course, we can override that if we want, or we can override the exposure. Some things are fixed, such as, of course, the aperture. I believe this is an f2.2 lens, and of course, you can't really change that on this camera. But nevertheless, you'll find the controls absolutely fantastic on this device. Tapping it is quite easy, pretty much no shutter lag, and it does save a 5 and 20 megapixel image at the same time. We can simply tap here, start zooming in, and see that quality from the 20 megapixel camera. Of course, this isn't the best image to really demonstrate that, but you get the idea. And as we approach the end of this review, it's time to talk about Windows Phone itself and how far it's come since we've used phones like the Lumia 920 back when Windows Phone 8 was released. And back then, apps were a little bit of a problem. There weren't too many fantastic applications that you could find in the market, but see here, diving into the store, and you'll find that it's quite a different situation these days. And in terms of at least the app selection, you won't find that there's too many problems here. We've got six snap for things such as um, Snapchat, Instagram, of course, that is an official Instagram app. We've got Skype, we've got mapping applications, we've got a ton of games and a ton of great first and third party applications. Sometimes the quality isn't as high as the Android counterparts for some of these apps, but Nokia's apps in particular are quite good, especially for things such as Drive, Maps, and Transit. So while the applications aren't too much of an issue, Microsoft hasn't really done much to optimize Windows Phone for the six inch display. We'll see here that we do have an extra row of icons. Normally the Windows Phone display only has two across in terms of these standard size icons, but here we do have three across. We get very dense information and of course, you can set up and can manipulate your home screen however you like by simply you know changing the application sizes and things like that. So as far as the home screens go, you'll see that it's quite, quite usable and I do enjoy having that extra row to get even more dense information on the home screen. However, when we dive into some applications, you'll see that it is nothing more than an enlargement of standard Windows Phone. I mean, we're talking about a six inch display here 
with an absolutely massive header at the top saying people. I mean, I can literally see this heading from 10 meters away on this six inch display. And here we can see we're only actually seeing four contacts by default on the Lumia 1520. So let's get up the Lumia 1020, which we have here and dive into the people app. And you can see that on exactly the same app, we're seeing just two fewer contacts on a display which has nearly half the real estate. And this simply isn't really acceptable. There's a lot of white space, or in this case, black space on the 1520s display around here and various things like that. And it's not just the people app where these issues sort of come into play. For example, diving right into the calendar and you can see that it's basically just a big version of what you have previously been used to on Windows Phone. There's no real utilization of the extra space that you're given with the six inch display. Again, we can go into things such as messaging. We haven't actually got any messages here. You see text is pretty much the same as you're used to in terms of size wise, but everything is just enlarged. Again, going to games, we've got a massive header at the top. This is a completely pointless waste of space at the top of the display. And I just wish that in some of these applications that they used the space better on the display. And it's also an issue in third party applications. See here with Twitter, we've again got a massive header that is a pretty massive waste of space. So I hope that in the future, especially with the merge of Windows Phone and Windows RT that will be coming up in the future, that Microsoft will sort of begin to optimize Windows Phone a little bit better for six inch displays and 1080p displays. Of course, we don't have any stylus support on this, which can make the Galaxy Note 3 that we have here a bit of a better choice. Of course, we have the stylus on the bottom, as you can see there, which can be used throughout applications. There is nothing like this on the Lumia 1520, unfortunately, but that six inch display is nevertheless a fantastic addition. So at the end of the day, I am quite impressed with the Nokia Lumia 1520, and it could just be the best Windows phone that you can buy with a fantastic high quality 1080p display, a powerful Snapdragon 800 SoC, and a brilliant 20 megapixel camera on the back. But of course, the device isn't without its flaws, and unfortunately, a lot of them come in the software front, not for the app reason that we've seen in the past, but for the lack of large screen optimization through Windows Phone, which tends to make just the operating system larger rather than utilizing this massive six inch display on the front of the device. In fact, you'll get pretty much the same experience if this device was 4.5 inches or five inches with its display as opposed to six inches. And again, the six inch display can make it a little bit cumbersome. It's quite a large device and that isn't for everyone. And to really, to be honest, if Nokia took exactly the same internals as this device, the same processor, the same camera, and the same quality 1080p display and shrunk down the device to five inches, we would have an absolute winner on our hands but unfortunately there are just some problems with the operating system and the size. That means that I can't say that this is the best device that I've ever used, but it certainly is one of the best Windows phones you can get. And it really shows you what Nokia can do when they're trying to make a large screen device. Hope you all have enjoyed this video review of the Nokia Lumia 1520. Don't forget to subscribe to TechSpot's YouTube channel for more cool video reviews coming up in the future. You can of course follow us on Twitter at TechSpot and you can follow me personally at Scorpus V. And this has been a TechSpot video review.